The Azure Load Balancer, it's been retired soon. You've got to be kidding me. But don't panic. In this video, we are going to help you migrate to the standard load balancer in about two minutes. Here in Azure Portal, I have opened the Cloud Shell and typed the command start az basic load balancer upgrade. And it has two requirements, the resource group name and the name of the basic load balancer. And you can see took two minutes and 37 seconds. And if we look at the load balancer, it's now using the standard SKU. The simple command is making a backup of the roles and configuring of your basic load balancer, deleting it and creating a new standard SKU load balancer, then applying your original roles and configuration, leaving you with a perfect migration. That doesn't seem that bad. To install the module, you can go to the PowerShell gallery and copy this command, then open PowerShell or the Cloud Shell and paste. You will probably get this warning that you are installing from an untrusted repository, which I'm going to accept, and in a few seconds, we are ready to go. If you view the help on the Start AZ Basic Load Balancer upgrade command, there are a lot of parameters that you could use, but generally, they are only needed for recovery or advanced scenarios, which we'll show you later. Also, everything that we show you today and more is covered in our documentation, which is linked in our video description. If you have a regular VM backend, you will have three files in your working directory where you ran the script. You'll have an ARM template for the basic load balancer, a state file, which is another backup of the basic load balancer, and the upgrade log. If you run more than one migration, the upgrade log will be appended to. This makes sense. So internal load balancers are easy. What about external load balancers with a scale set backend? We will also need to upgrade the VM scale set model during the migration. Just be sure to remove any protection policies from your scale set VMs because that would block the upgrade and the migration would fail. This migration will also build a new network security group if you don't have one already, which is a best practice for protect your load balancer and only allow the traffic you require through the front end to the back end. And in just a few minutes, we have got our new standard load balancer. And you can see the new NSG allowing just port 80 and port 81. So our traffic will follow while we staying secure. And you have a new standard load balancer with a new standard public IP address resources. What if something goes wrong? If you get an error during migration, there will be details on your screen and in the logs telling you what you need to do to fix the issue. In the script directory, you'll have your state file backups, which are created before the migration began. After fixing the error, you can retry the migration with the start easy basic load balancer upgrade command with the failed migration retry file path parameter and pass the name of the state file and hit enter. But in this case, when it goes to check for the name, it finds that the standard load balancer already exists from the failed migration. Since we have backups, you can just delete the standard load balancer, which will free up the name. And now you can clear the screen and retry the same command using the state file and we're done. That is so cool. Here we have both an internal and an external load balancer associated with the same backend resource, which is a VM scale set. We can handle this by passing an array of load balancers to the script. In the documentation, look for the example of migrate multiple related load balancers. Click here to copy the code and paste it somewhere you can edit like VS Code. You need to change the resource group name. If you want to, optionally, you can change the standard load balancer name here and here. Then run the same start a Z load balancer command with multiple LB config parameter and pass it to the variable for your array and you're done. And if you have any migration failures, you recover each load balancer individually. I think I can do this. Two final thoughts for you to be aware of. If you have NAT pools on your standard load balancer, they will be upgraded to NAT rules by default. 
And if you're running a service fabric cluster, the migration will take more than an hour and will cause application downtime. Instead, consider adding a new node type to your service fabric cluster with a basic load balancer. Then upgrade that load balancer to a standard load balancer. After that is complete, move your replicas from your old node type to your new node type. Lastly, managed service fabric clusters are not supported because we can't control those load balancers. Now that you know how easy it is to upgrade your basic load balancers, you should watch this next video on the latest in Azure networking. Have a great day.